Good morning. We'll call the committee the whole meeting to order for June 20th. 2024, uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Barnes. Present. Mrs. Burdick. Here. Mr. Curran. Here. Mr. Sear. Mr. Demick? Here. Mr. Fanton? Here. Mrs. Hanchett? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Havey? Here. Mr. Healy? Here. Mr. Rickey? Here. Here. Mrs. Ricketts Swales? Mrs. Root? Here. Mr. Rumfeld? Mr. Stocken? Here. Twelve present, three absent. Thank you. So, kind of a an agenda full of updates today on some items that are have been backburnered for a while and gotten some questions from legislators about the status of, of different projects we're working on. Um, item three, Delta and congressional funding update. So some emails have been flying around, but they continue to get updated as changes are made. Um, put on everybody's desk a packet. Um, it looks like this, and I think Brenda sent it as an email as well. But I think um, our congressional, our senators and our rep Langworthy are finished with their, on the Senate side, uh, congressionally directed spending, and on the House side, the community project funding, the earmarks. They're done combing through the, all the applications, and I just wanted to run through these so we know where we're at. Some of them are. Our county applications, some of them are uh, municipal applications that happen to be in Allegheny County. So just where we're all on the same page. <clears throat> we did get through Langworthy's office the county's only um, project that made it onto Langworthy's list is the Gateway Water Improvement Project. So that's what you see on page one there. Um, Langworthy also did uh, support the Cornell Cooperative Extensions. Um, capital improvement project for their building. Uh, if you go to page two there, Gillibrand um, is supporting Cuba's uh, sewer project, Angelica's water um, project, and our gateway project. And Delta's quick to point out that, and you guys have probably already seen this or know it, but on Langworthy's side, he gets, he gets a shorter list of projects that he can submit. It's like 15 projects. And of, the, of that list, they're much more likely to survive all the way through actual funding than the, the Senate side. The Senate will throw 200 projects on their list, and a vast majority of them never get funded. So just bear that in mind that for the senators, just because they're on the list doesn't mean they're still not likely to get funded, but this is kind of the first hurdle. So it's still good news because we, we haven't been on the senator's lists at all. This is our first year to, to even get to this point. So yeah. The other good news is uh, it's election year, so senators will be trying to do whatever they can across the state. I'm sure, I'm sure they're not. I doubt highly they consider that when they make their decisions. I know it's on the merit, and we have excellent projects. So. Um, all right, so we're still on page two here. So Gillibrand's three, they divide it up. So this by federal agency. So this is Department of Interior um, is where our water, water line project at the crossroads or gateway fell in. You go to page three, uh, Department of Agriculture, you'll see the Cooperative Extension also got supported by Gillibrand and the Belfast Public Library. Um, if you're not familiar with what they're trying to do, they've got their original structure and then they've got a little building to the side that was formerly a house that they use for their children's collection. What they want to do is do an expansion on the original building um, and divest themselves of the other building. So Joe Brand has supported that. It's an expensive project. It's over a million bucks. Page four, Gillibrand, Labor, Department of Labor, Health and Human Services. Alfred State's got a workforce development thing, something to do with trucking. I'm not sure what that is, whether it's one of their micro um, credential uh, initiatives. Does anybody know? I do. 
What's um, it, what is it? Call, it? Basically, it's training. I think it's coming through the Workforce um, Development Board on that. So, and um, they'll be working with training and getting people CDLs. So, just cool. happened to jump on a meeting for that. Okay, that's another expensive one, over a million bucks. But, and someone else supported it. Maybe simulators. simulators? Yeah. yeah. Uh, next page. We're into Chuck Schumer. He also supported the library and the cooperative extension project. And then uh, interior and environment. Um, he supported Cuba's uh, sewer improvement project, Angelica's water project, and our uh, gateway infrastructure project. Next page. I'm not sure why it lists as DO, state DOT, but that's our application. Um, which we're calling Phase A of the Kenya Dia Bridge. And Phase A is the rehabilitation of the old bridge uh, as a pedestrian walkway and feature of the um, trail network there, and also some pre-engineering engineering work on an actual replacement, like road bridge there um, in Kenya Dia. All right, I'm very back is Schumer, and it looks like he's also supporting that transportation, uh, the Alfred State uh, CDL project. Um, I don't know if I missed any. I think I got them all. But. So anyway, it's good news. And then I'm hoping I'm going to put Chris on the spot. <clears throat> They've kind of, Delta's kind of pivoted away from that, those applications, because they, we've taken them as far as we can now. <clears throat> but now Del we've got Delta working on a CDBG application and uh, help me out here, Chris, a WQIP, Water Quality Improvement something. So what are those projects for and what are the applications like for that? I don't think I can really answer that question at the moment. Um, my laptop's on its very last battery power. So I believe they're all going to be related to the crossroads infrastructure. And there's MOEs on both coming to you in ways and means today. OK. All right, thanks. So yeah, Delta, Delta approached administration and said, OK, I think this deadline is July 31st for what Chris is talking about. Uh, approached Tom and admin and said, do you have anything that might fit these two applications? And, and Gateway did fit. And we have enough pre-engineering done to do solid applications for those, and so that's what Delta is working on now. But uh, it, it, Deb? is this state money that we're applying for, not federal? Both state? of those are state. Yeah. Both of them are state. Yeah. yeah. Now the WQIP, I'm not sure if the state acts as a pass through on that for federal money, but it is. The application goes to this DEC. Yeah. Okay, so that's where we're at with Delta. I still think we're getting pretty good bang for our buck with them. The impression I'm getting. They're putting a lot of work in. For we would not be applying for these without their assistance. We don't have the manpower to do this. And even with their assistance, it takes considerable manpower out of my office um, and DPW as well as planning right now. All right, good on that. OK, four, sales tax. This isn't our monthly sales tax report. This is, um, I think this started with Dwight. We had a District 3 meeting. Um, the question of sales tax sharing raised his head again, and his District 3 is not alone. I think it's come up in District 4 a number of times. District 2, just this week. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, so um, Terry and Brenda uh, have gone to work. If you guys remember, we have all seen, like we, there's an ancient document, like 2004 or something that it's just kind of like a bullet list of county services that are provided to municipalities. Um, Brenda and Terry uh, have been uh, working a little bit on, on tightening that up, updating it. And uh, I think it was Brenda, was it you, Brenda, that put this spreadsheet together? Yes. And that's also on everybody's desks? Yes. So. Um, will, that, will that be sent to us electronically, too? I believe I did. OK. Thanks, I'll check. And I don't know which one of you wants to to maybe speak on it a little bit. Brenda? Okay. Brenda, would you be willing to walk us through the spreadsheet a little bit just so we know what we're looking at? Sure. Um, on the top, it's actually two uh, spreadsheets combined onto one sheet. 
Um, in the first two columns at the top, you'll see the um, town budgets for 22, 23, 24. Um, and then the community college expenses. I included the town budgets just so we could see how those, um, you know, two or three cost centers of the county, or two or three programs that the county runs compares to their town budgets. So the first one is the community college expense. I received all that information right from Terry. Um, and you can see last year that was over a million and I believe that it's budgeted for over a million this year as well and then the bridge maintenance and town bridge information I received from the Public Works Department it's a little bit harder to track the town bridge program because so many of the bridges run over multiple years and the expenses are um, as you can see divided by the year for those so that's a little bit harder to track the very last column gives us our totals for just those three program county programs um, for 22 and 23 and then down at the bottom there's just a comparison of 22 and 23 costs compared to the community college expense and the bridge maintenance um, and then the very last column is the percent of the town's budget, or the, I'm sorry, the percent of the county programs compared to the town's budget. So, for example, in 23, 4.57%, our cost represents 4.57% of Alfred's budget just for those two programs. So basically what that's saying is that if Alfred was to pay for those just two programs that we provide, they would have to add 4.57% to their budget. Which is probably yes. well over their cap and you know they would have to do some other things to be able to absorb just those two programs that the county provides for them. And that probably fluctuates a lot depending on whether or not there's a big bridge project in any given town or in any given Correct. Year. That's why Brenda kind of listed all those bridge programs from 17 to 24 because you'll see they're all over the place. So it's not, you know, it's all over the county. And depending on the bridge that's picked, um, and, you know, that varies depending on the uh, status of the bridge. If we get a red flag on a bridge and it has to be done, then that's going to skew those numbers as well. But it was kind of hard when Brenda and I were talking to try to get it in a good format that you guys could use to pitch what you need to pitch. But um, overall, just two programs are going to put the towns in some pretty bad shape, some of them. So. Yep. Yeah. Almost up. just a question for clarify if when I'm talking to people community college expenses if we didn't pay at each town would pay for every one of their students out of their out of their district is that correct I just want to have that correct when I talk to people and that's, that's correct. hard to budget is, oh go ahead Tim. yeah that is a town <clears throat> cost that the towns have never paid in Allegheny County and it could be hard for them to budget for that because you never know how many kids from your town are going to go to a community college. And I believe it also includes, and correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, those junior and senior high school students that are taking college credits at their home school. Yes, it actually includes, um, we've seen ninth graders. That oh, have okay. been getting the tuition assistance right. so it goes down as far as ninth graders oh. and it's the town they reside in so regardless of the school district they're in it goes back to the town they reside in and there's quite a few other expenses that aren't included I know um, I did contact the planning department they've done quite a bit of work with the towns lately and helping them secure some grants and I think there's um, it's something the towns wouldn't be able to do without the planning department a lot of that th that technical support is hard to quantify um, but there, it's a real cost and Mr. Demick was mentioning the, the tech there's a lot of technical assistance that's provided by DPW too to the, our municipalities so 
I, I actually think there's a lot on the health side too, Mr. Chairman. I don't believe we're required to have um, a countywide health district, and if we did not do that, each individual town would have to have theirs. That obviously would have been a huge expense to them, especially during COVID. Thank you. So just some information. Yes, Mr. Barnes. Um, what I'd like to see is, uh, is <clears throat> if Allegheny County chose to go like some, some of the other counties that, she, that, that are shown on that other sheet, uh, where the 3% where the split 50-50 and so on and so forth, how would, the, how would, if we did that, how would we be better off, the county better off, the town's better off, or what, how, somewhere's in between. Terry. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, yeah, the sheet that um, talks about the tax sharing per county came from NISAC. Every um, once in a while, they'll do a survey of what people are doing, if they're sharing, if they've changed it. So this is the most recent one they did. They've just asked us for more information on a new one. Um, and what that really, you would have to come up with, that's this sheet, yes. You would have to come up with how you would want to share. There are, as you can see on this sheet, there are multiple ways that, that counties share their sales tax. Um, so you'd have to come up with a way to, to share it. Um, some counties share, you know, the half a percent and they go that way. Um, some counties share all of their sales tax different ways based on population, based on, you know, different, different ideas within that um, county. But without having an example of how you might want to share it, there's no way to, to really determine the effect of it. The, the biggest differentiation is do, do you share t with municipalities based on population or you do it based on assessed value? Because if you think about Wellsville as a retail center of the county and everybody's coming from the hill country to shop down at Runnings, for example, if you, if you shared based on assessed value, then all that sales tax revenue would go to Wellsville. If you shared it by population, then those people in Alma or Willing or wherever who come into Wellsville and spend their, their money, they would get a, a larger benefit from the sales tax sharing. So, and there's counties that do it both ways, if I'm not mistaken, right, Terry? And, and there's multiple ways to do it, um, but it's never, it's never based on the uh, hub of the shopping. So it's not where the sales tax is generated. It's always calculated on some other um, multiplier so that it's spread within your whole 29 towns. But assessed value would have the same effect. I mean, if you look at uh, the Kmart Plaza, it could be assessed for $20 million. I don't know what it's assessed for, $20 million. That, you took the entire assessment of the town of Willing. Um, but, but assessments aren't um, done by the same person exactly. countywide, and there's big variances between towns on the assessments. So it would be tough to compare you might have one town that's vastly under assessing a giant um, sales tax supplier. Maybe that would be a way to get the towns to keep their assessments up. Amen. <laughs> Just what I was thinking. We, we, well, got, we got towns that are in the 60s, 60 mm -hmm. yeah. percent. It's ridiculous. Right. Yeah, you'd have to look at all of that. Population is at least steady. Um, and calculated the same way for each municipality. Assessments are all over the place. You've got exemptions that would take into effect. Um, there's a lot to look at with assessments. Um, and again, you know, you're, you've got some assessors that do a great, great job, and you've got others that are surface assessors. So um, you just need to, you know, figure out what you want to do if that's the case. Um, and present different ways if that's what you wanted to do. But at the same token, you're looking at two plans here that in reality, these are, are these municipalities going to get enough of the share of sales tax to even cover these two programs, let alone everything else that the county provides for them? So I think that's what you got to look at. Right. And the problem with this is that it doesn't go into services in lieu of. So we, don't, we have no idea what these other counties are doing in providing services 
to towns in addition to, if at all, in addition to sales tax sharing. I think at the end of the day, what we've always said, and I assume what you guys have always said, is that we're always willing to look at it. You know, it's not like we're hoarding money here. Uh, we're always willing to look at it, but I can guarantee this board would not support sharing sales tax if it meant us blowing through the cap, if it would damage the county to the extent that we wouldn't be able to balance our books. So I think if we ever really wanted to take a deep dive into this thing, you would have to hire it out. It's just too complex. Um, there's too many variables. And you just have to get a firm to come in, and accounting firm, or I don't know what, and and really take it all into consideration and give the board some numbers that we could actually look at. Mike, okay. thank you, Chairman. Uh, do we have uh, that list of all the services we do provide? Do we have one of those lists there? I think uh, didn't we take over? The, wasn't that part of the deal when we took over garbage? That was. Uh, uh, they were able to close their landfills, and we took that responsibility. And it's been, uh, it costs the county a, a lot of money to, to do it. Even though we do get uh, money for, for the tickets and for taking care of it, it's, a, it's, it's only about half of what it takes to, right. to run that landfill operation. So. And obviously, that's got, in my opinion, garbage and water are going to be two of your biggest issues uh, going forward, also. Not, for every community, every place, everywhere. Uh, so we want to keep that in mind also. And I think, uh, obviously, what we've done, uh, tried to, to uh, uh, support in, uh, in uh, 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 the uh, emergency services part, too, is something that we're not, not as of yet, required, required, required to do either. And we've stepped up to the plate for that. I think overall, county government's been, been a pretty good steward. Um, I wish we had more economic development. That's where we need to grow. Is uh, we just need more positive economic development. Okay. Um, if the towns took it over, or, or if we shared it, do we just cut them a check and send it to them, or is there a lot more paperwork that they would have to track? And they wouldn't have to track anything. We would have to track it. We would have. We would have to calculate the. Um, the percentage or whatever you're going to do or the flat amount whatever you're going to do we would have to calculate all that and i think it's a yearly some counties do it quarterly um some do it yearly um some take it off their levy you know there's a lot of different ways to take <coughs> it back you know just like the state took money back from us from our sales tax we'd do the same trying so, to take it off. so it would be levy. additional work on our end to even monitor this and to distribute it and, mm -hmm. and to do all that Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got some additional information to help us out when we go out in the field and receive questions on that. No. Dwight? Yeah, I, I would just like to point out the cooperation that we have between the towns and our county DPW. Um, it benefits us as a county and it benefits those as, a, as the towns. And that cooperation has been really based on our willingness as a county to to support whatever towns need if they need a big piece of equipment we've always been there we get a schedule and we'll try to meet those demands that they have so um i appreciate where their where their thoughts are but if you look at the whole picture it's uh, um we really do a lot for the towns that the average taxpayer really doesn't understand so thank you deb I, I hesitate to bring this up, but I will because I think we should know. And in the last week, I've had conversations with just people. It just They just happened. And um, the conversation came that the sales tax and sharing, that there's a perception out there that we are hoarding a huge fund balance here and keeping it from our taxpayers. I, I just want to share that. I don't agree with that, but that was what was said to me. There's a misperception out there on this whole thing. Are you? Yeah, I think the other thing to look at is where our rate per thousand has uh, gone in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. If you look at those numbers, uh, uh, we've we've lowered that rate per thousand uh, quite a bit. So that's another thing that we able to use the sales tax for. OK. 
Okay, good. No, they don't see that. But we're not alone in that either. The school, the school districts get hammered over their fund balances. I, th I think that's human nature to a certain extent. So, but uh, I agree with Dwight. We've done an awful lot for the towns, and uh, I think, uh, as I said, we're we've been pretty good stewards. So I think our role is sort of like being dad at home or mom, as the case may be, and we got to look at everything and just try to make the best decisions we can make it as an entity. Uh, at the same time, representing our individual districts. Mr. Stockham. I would just uh, echo all of that, but uh, from a town perspective in which I've been involved for 40 years, I uh, can't say thank you enough to the county for all those things that have been mentioned. I've, I've realized them in real life. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Stockham. <laughs> all right, is that enough? Okay, go ahead, Terry. Um, someone brought up the list of um Things that we supply to the county, or we um, help the count, help the municipalities out, and we do have that. Um, that was generated a while ago. We've tried to keep up on that, but there are no dollars on it. There's a lot of things like um, Brooke had mentioned about quantifying the the value of certain things that we do. We do have that list. I mean, I think Brenda and I can share that with you guys about what that was done many years ago. Um, but it's a pretty lengthy list of things, and it come, goes to the big things, to the little things. So um, if you guys want to see that, we can certainly send that to you as well. But we okay. use that on the side. These are just the high-dollar things that we knew of, so that's why they were put on this spreadsheet. The other thing we want to keep in mind, some towns have more pilots than other towns, so which we have to make up. Uh, make up for the difference uh, if, if uh, in uh, uh, the taxes on those properties too. So I think uh, we've done a pretty good job of uh, trying to monitor all that and be fair to everybody. Uh, but uh, And uh, I think uh, Mr. Harris has done a, a, a good job as chairman uh, keeping his eye on uh, and all that too so thank you thank you all right good on that <clears throat> all right item five county historian so um mallory short facilitated a meeting with the allegheny county historical society um, basically it was an invite for them to hold a meeting here at the chambers and give them an opportunity to come here give uh, mallory and me and Carissa and Tim and Mr. Healy sat in on the meeting, an opportunity to talk with them about what's going on at the county with the county historian position and our plans. It was a good meeting. Um, and because it just happened a couple days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, I can't remember, um, thought maybe Mallory could come address the board and give us an update on where we are with historian um, and a grant application that she's sought after. Ma'am? Thank you. I have with me copies of the updated job description. Um, the county historian role in general has changed from when it was less truly appointed. Is your mic on? It is. It is? Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so I wasn't sure. So our last historian was also charged with the responsibility of records management, which the board has since reassigned to the county administrator. Um, that's why we went back and we took a look at the civil service job description for county historian uh, and pulled some of those, uh, those responsibilities out so that the job description would truly reflect what we anticipate the role being of county historian. Um, this will cover the responsibilities we're obligated um, to have uh, as a county for county historian, um, and then some additional duties that we believe are an appropriate fit. These are all subject to change. This is a board appointment. Um, A candidate would have to meet the minimum qualifications established for the position in order to take on the role. Um, but uh, we've made those um, uh, 
non-limiting. We believe that we should post probably by the end of fall for the position. It'll be part-time. And I would say that we would have a candidate starting by the first of the year. Um, as for the grant, we applied for a grant. You guys gave us permission to do that um, with the New York State Archives. This would be to fund the expense of inventorying the uh, collection of the county historian. We anticipate the decision to be made, hopefully, and I verified with our contact with archives today, the end of this month. So I'm trying not to email her weekly to see if anything's come up, if there's any hint. Um, but hopefully, we have a good application for that, and uh, we'll get that going. Um, Brooke mentioned our conversation with the Allegheny County Historical Society. Um, we are grateful that their president, executive director, and many of their board of trustees, I believe there were eight of their board of trustees, uh, joined us here in, in your chambers. Uh, we provided them with a draft agreement where we would loan to them the genealogy records. Um, so we're waiting to hear back from them on how they feel if they'll be signing that. Um, I think you all approved doing that and gifting those genealogy records because Genealogy research is actually not something that fits in the role of county historian. Can you clarify that? We, did, we are gifting them. We're not loaning? Okay. Yes. Um, I believe we were protected in the agreement by if something were to occur with the historical society, those records would come back under our protection. OK. There was some maybe. Um, there was an opportunity to clear up some miscommunication with them in that meeting, namely that I think we feel as a county that we really need to get our inventory in order before we even start talking about what kind of relationship the county should have with the historical society. So we're kind of in a holding pattern, am I right, yeah. with this grant application? I think other historians in our area and other groups have reached out to different people, to the historical society, to friends, to other department heads, saying, well, if the county's giving stuff away, we want some. No one's giving anything away. The inventory is essential. We've, I think Carissa, cited the number of years we'd had a historian and we don't have a complete inventory. We first got a historian in 1941 <clears throat> and we've had eight or nine historians and no one has ever done an inventory. They've taken on collections but never inventoried them or properly stored them. And I believe the Historical Society requested that we inventory it before we give it, gave it to them. They did. To, to store. Um, so no decisions have been made, nothing has been given away there's nothing like that going on so i know that's come up we're very strictly protecting the collection of the county historian until the board makes any sort of decision and we have appropriate data to provide you before you make that decision okay thank you ma'am any questions okay i'll just say before we lose you i think it was mr healy brought up the possibility of just providing funding like in our budget, provide funding to the historical society in general, um, like we do with the Fair, the Ag Society or the Blind Association and so forth. So that's always a possibility. Um, whether or not that's tied to any service that they provide back to the county would be up to the board. But um, like any other organization, in order for us to consider that as a board, they just really need to make a request. So. Um, We'll just see where that goes. We're just getting into budget, so and we haven't gotten a request of that nature from them, correct? No, yeah. no, not of that nature. Okay, Mr. Stockton. Uh, there's another question that came up once in a conversation about this. Somebody asked why, why do the inventory first? Why not have the historian do the inventory and thus be personally one-on-one -on -one related with everything we have? You um, know, which comes first? The, I think they requested that we inventory it, and I'm not sure they have the staff available to complete the inventory. And there are some things in there that are that should stay with the county. That's not just um, like a historical collection. It's all the the files of a complete office, all the photographs that have been taken of board events over the years, and staff and personnel that we we would want here for our own access and use. I think we've hoped with the grant application and the process of the inventory that we're able to build some collaboration and some true transparency of what we have, 
what the collections are, what the conditions are, um, and to invite our local historians in as volunteers as part of that process. So we made sure to budget for technology um, that would allow for volunteers to come in and participate in the inventory. So I'm hoping that it's a very positive pr uh, project. <coughs> Yeah, and I think in general, I don't think any of us, except maybe Mallory, uh, has any idea of the volume of work that's associated with performing this inventory. I, I just think there's so much material, and th it, there's like some seriously high-level archival work that needs to take place to get us back where we need to be. And I don't think it would be fair for us to saddle what would be our long-term historian with that project uh, out of the gate. That's fair. <laughs> Mr. Healy? Okay. I, I thought the, uh, when they were here the other day, the Historical Society, and Matt, I thought that they, they did make an oral request for funds. You want that followed up by a, uh, some sort of a written uh, <laughs> amount with uh, write, in writing from them what they would like? And I would say, you can't just say we need money. No, I understand that. Yeah. So yeah, they would need to submit. I would. I would say probably I'm going to turn to our budget um, director here. It's what Phil's that's under would be under Phil's committee. I, yeah, I think if you're looking for it depends if you're looking for this year or for next year's budget. So if, if for this year you definitely would want something in writing for them for this year's budget. Um, going forward, we you know we do have a number of societies and agencies that we support um, we have been talking about the budget process with them and making sure they know they need to provide written requests for the 2025 budget going forward we could send out something similar for 24 if they're looking for money this year I think next year they're looking for the contract though thank you Jim I may have missed it but could you please tell us what the grant is that you're applying for and how much and what everything what it's going to do yeah Thanks. so the grant is through the New York State Archives it's for seventy five thousand dollars which is the maximum amount that we could request um, as a county and it's intended to complete the inventory so it would provide someone who is a collection specialist and then uh, a part-time and then two uh, like office aides to help with the actual inventory and data collection and then it would provide computer materials and supplies um, that could be included in the budget process. Basic office supplies could not. Um, so anything that is a, was an appropriate request that would meet the needs of these temporary staff um, were requested through the budget. Um, we hope for the budget funds can be expended July to June 30th, July 1st to June 30th. Um, so as soon as hopefully we get the grant and then we receive the funds, we hope to get things posted, get people hired, um, and, and get the process started. Would that include scanning the records? No. I, that would be a very long process. That's like year two or year three digitization. Um, you guys have also provided funding for OnBase. OnBase has the ability to do records retention so that is a long-term hope. Part of the process that we've already started and Alex from the county administrator's office has mapped out is um, with the inventory, having an electronic database of what collection belongs where. Um, so someone would be able to go in, scan a box and see what's in it um, or look within the database and find out which files located where. And one more question. Um, have you talked to Sarah over at Southern Tier West at all because she has helped the towns immensely on getting their records, all their vital records and everything, scan and historical records. And I, I think Southern Tier West actually applied for a grant, grant themselves, and then they included all the towns in that grant. So yes. I didn't know if the county could piggyback on any of that. Um, we have not started that process, only because when we spoke to the New York State Archives, um, we were fortunate enough that Monica, who is our representative, was in the area and reached out to our county clerk and said, hey, I'll be in the area, can we visit? Um, so he, of course, said, absolutely, let me show off the county. Um, so he, we took her a walk through quickly our historian's collection, and she said, here's step one, an inventory. Uh, find out what is essential, what 
belongs, unfortunately, in the garbage because it was just, you know, someone's, you know, random records from 1920 that have no historical relevance to anyone but maybe that person. Um, so complete a full inventory and then take those next steps. So um, we're following that recommendation. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, Mallory. So we are a little bit ahead of schedule. Would anyone like to make a motion to take agenda item eight, new business, out of order? Thank you, Legislator Hanchett, second by Legislator Havey. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, we're in new business. Just a couple quick, easy things. I think that um, NISAC, I might have dreamt it, Brenda, but NISAC put the word out seeking resolutions for their standing committees to consider for the fall conference. Is that right? Okay. So we haven't really done a great job of participating in that effort <clears throat> up to now. But I thought maybe what we could do is, and this is open for discussion, um, ask the committee chairs to consider adding that as an agenda item to one of their upcoming committee meetings. And then in the interim, members of those committees could kind of go back through their memory banks for the year and, and consider if there were any resolutions sponsored by that committee that they would like to be considered at the NISAC standing, by the NISAC standing committees in the fall. So um, I can think of you know, a couple that might be promising. A lot of times with the advocacy resolutions, they come down from NISAC and then, or inter-county, and then we pass them and then they just go back up, which is just kind of an effort and futility. But every once in a while, we have our own ideas. And if you can remember any that you think might be worthy of statewide consideration, um, it might be helpful. I'm gonna, while we're doing that, I'm gonna reach out to our state reps offices and see if they have any um, legislation that they've introduced at the state level that is, whether it's gaining traction or not, um, that they would like us to consider forwarding on to NISAC. One example of that was Senator Borello, that I just learned this this week, has introduced a bill that would require the parole board to cite parolees um, when they are relocated and introduced back into society um, at a location closest to the members of the parole board that voted in favor of issuing the parole. So if that's something you would like forwarded on to NISAC's Public Safety Committee, uh, we could certainly do that. Um, uh, Mr. Nemec. Um, speaking of NISAC, <clears throat> have we acted at all on the CHIPS request from NISAC? Um, they were looking for us to support the the proposal that for chip sealing and to be added as a as a different thing. I, I got that from NISAC here a couple of weeks ago. Is we have it, we have I know we have not. I don't remember seeing it. I'd but. like to see us do that. That would be very important to not only the county yes. but all the surrounding towns and villages. Can you forward that email? I absolutely can. And then we can get I don't think we need an MOE. We could just draft a resolution and, and get it going. I'll share it. Thank you. Okay. Any other any thoughts on that? Something we could work on if we don't come up with anything? Oh, well. But Deb? Uh, well, what comes to mind as far as uh, economic development is we've been trying to get registration of ATVs for a long time. Um, there's been several bills every year that goes up to and gets to the transportation committee and then dies a slow death. Um, I just, I, and I've been watching and seeing a lot since ATVs are out there and about. And um, there's a Facebook page, I think Wellsville ATV Club or something like that. And all these people from out of state are saying, hey, how do I register, register my ATV and be legal in New York? And they're coming back and going, you can't, you're not, you can't. You're not. New York is losing so much sales tax, and we have, and people are riding anyways. Our streets are full of ATVs, and they're illegal, and they think they're legal. If they um, register them in Pennsylvania and they come over here, they're not, but they think they are. So, 
Maybe we could do something there and send something up. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Healy. I'm always concerned with the fact that uh, the New York State the people occupy 1% of the land mass of this great state. Uh, uh, telling the rest of us what to do, period, with uh, the entire upstate New York. Um, so I'd like us to do something on the mandates again. And say so no mandates unless the state either wants to run the program or, or it, well, he should fund it to begin with, completely fund it if it's, and, uh, if it's a state mandate. And they probably ought to run it too. Thank you. Okay, one other quick thing in uh, new business. We are confirmed that we have a legislator's fair booth again this year. So um, I love the fair as much as anybody, but I don't want to like work the whole week at the fair. So I think we'll put out an email and see, see if we can get like a, a sign-up sheet similar to what we did last year if people want to put some time in at our legislator's fair booth. And then if anybody has any recommendations for improvements to the booth for this year or things we should do or shouldn't do or anything, let's just get an email going and, and strategize a way to make our booth even better this year. I'll volunteer my, uh, your, your my setup again, again if Thank you, you want it. Oh, yeah, we want it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's enough for new business, unless anybody else has new business. All right. Let's bounce back. Would someone like to take make a motion to enter executive session, discuss the employment history of a particular person? Thank you, Legislator Rickett Swales, second by Legislator Havey. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? And we're in executive session.